Peterson. Love this, too. Hello, my dear. Good morning, John. How are you? Can you work those dials yet? Can I do what? <laughs> work those dials. Oh, no, yep. no, there's people here. I, they just point to me and I start talking. <laughs> glad you can do this. Hey, I'm glad that uh, something I printed out to talk about, I didn't actually get to you because I look at your docket today and realize... It's something you were going to discuss. I saw this, and it's actually gotten some national attention, and it's the is the infamous asparagus scandal. Yes. What do you think of that? Well, and, and to set it up for people, a guy goes into a schnooks, which I think was on the north side. You city. And saw that uh, um, the asparagus was dry, it wasn't sitting in water, and the produce in general was kind of eh. Yet, if you go to another schnook somewhere else, it's going to have, you know, lush produce and well-watered and all that. Made the point, sent a note to, to Scott Schnook, and I don't know if that ever got responded to, but the story got picked up, and here we oh, are. sure. Talking. Schnooks responded, and this man, Mr. Oland, Dave Olander, is on the Human Rights Commission, I believe, for University City. So, lending him... A little bit of an air of authority, but he might have, I think, something carried it too far. All right, but I got to say, it got me thinking about it. And when you, you know, I'll go to the Schnook sometimes down on Lindell or, or the one on the south side on South Grand. And then I'll stop at the Schnooks at Ledoux <laughs> Crossing. There is a vast difference in the produce. I understand. I agree with you. I understand. My colleagues did not agree. Well, at least, yeah. But, I would I would be remiss to say Kyle I guess both colleagues, but certainly the colleague who wrote a foul on Mr. Olander thought that it was a silly issue. And I said, you know, my view is that maybe the dried asparagus at that U City store was a silly issue. However, the issue of unequal maintenance depending on where the grocery store is located is a real issue. You know, but and, and so, but some people will yeah. say, look, if you look at the selection at the meat counter, it's going to be different uh, down in the city as opposed to out in West County. And part of that is knowing your community and know what they want. I don't imagine there's a lot of people that are barbecuing uh, snoots in Frontenac on a Saturday. So I understand how you're going to want to put different items in there. But, yes. the, but the care and the product and the level of the produce should be consistent. And I'm just going out on a limb here. I don't know this to be factual, but I would think it's probably a little pricier to buy that produce in Frontenac or Ladue because they got to make up for that uh, higher quality stuff somewhere. Why not you know, have you I pay have for it? What I found, frankly, is that sometimes stores, and I'm not going to single out Chinooks, but stores in areas in which people don't have a great deal of mobility, so you're kind of forced to shop at that one store, actually charge more. And it doesn't have anything to do with the quality of the product. Really? But it all has to do with having a market that people can't access, don't have a lot of options. So it is, I think there's a bigger and larger and more interesting story than Mr. Olander and the asparagus, and maybe he ruined the bigger discussion by making it about a trivial matter. And I kind of felt sorry for Schnooks because they've certainly been taken on the chin for the past few months. And I don't think they are the only chain store that may be remiss in. I, I know that I've gone to a gross, uh, no, to a movie store chain in uh, North City and I've gone to their, their movie, and movie theaters in North City and North County. I don't even know if they exist anymore, but I did, you know, years past. And the quality was significantly different than those movie chains, theaters in far West County and, you know, Mid-County. So you're so, saying the, you're, so you're saying the ex asparagus at Warrenburg isn't quite up <laughs> to par. They need to water their asparagus. <laughs> Maybe they have a spare guy. Right. So I do think it's a legitimately interesting issue, but I don't know that this was the one you wanted to, um, you know, cut into your salad. Yeah, and you know, it, it could just be that was the produce that came in that day, or well, the I produce think they manager was out. tipped over. I think the tray that they normally kept the water in had tipped over, yeah, and nobody because even, it. even in expensive zip codes, I have seen some less than desirable produce, and not just Snooks. I don't want to single them out either, but right. 
Certainly like well worth the conversation, and stltoday.com's got some interesting uh, scribings on that, and you knew Deb Peterson was going to talk all about it. And Jenny McCarthy, I really kind of thought you were past gossip <laughs> now that you have a legitimate gig down there. Hey, you have young children, and I don't know what your view is on childhood vaccinations. But let me just ask you, do you want to take advice, your medical advice, from a nude model turned uh, talk show TV personality or from people who may have MD after their names. I think you're leaving out a key point here, Deb. Jenny McCarthy is hot. Well, okay, so she's smoking let's take out the meeting hot. with her in person part. Let's take out that you're just, let's just say you're getting your advice over the internet. Yeah, I know she's been an outspoken uh, advocate uh, for people not, but, yeah, not vaccinating their children, which in this day and age seems wildly archaic. Everybody's it's in- dangerous for Pete's sake. It's dangerous for your children. It's dangerous for other children with whom they come in contact. And you know what? Jenny McCarthy has a son with autism. I am empathetic and sympathetic for her, toward her. However... That doesn't make her an expert on childhood development. And I understand that we seek reasons to to try to find out why the people we love have some of the problems they have. But don't lead the nation astray, and people don't listen to her. I mean, that's a dangerous, just dangerous to follow these people who, say, you know, pseudoscience. Come on, it's okay. not a good idea. You're panicking. Right. She hasn't even started yet, first of all. <laughs> Well, secondly, her, her thing, her anti-vaccination organization has been in existence for at least five years. Well, maybe she won't bring it up. I mean, usually they're busy with more insipid things than that. Like how Barbara Walters keeps her shoes on or something. Exactly. So, you know. Those are the important issues of the day. Right. Okay. Uh, didn't uh, the cattle rustling in southwest Missouri, I didn't know if that was something you wanted to touch on quickly. I don't, I don't know. Well, I think it's interesting. And I, I, I there was a cattle rustler. People think there's no such thing, right? You think it's a dead, it's archaic, it's history, but no. Cattle rustling is thriving in southwest Missouri. So they have lots and we have dogs and they open the gate and the dogs herd the cattle and the cattle just, you know, hear the feed pan rattling or whatever it is and they just tromp up and they're, they're gone. <laughs> they're history. So it costs a lot of money to breed cattle and the cattle ranchers down there were mighty angry and there's been there, so a man was arrested last week and charged with more than I think $100,000 in agricultural theft with both cattle and equipment but they say he's been part of a ring for about 25 years. So right. they're rounding them up, and I think it's a good way for the state to use its money. And mm. that was my point. Good mm. public policy, not an urban problem, at least not as we see it, although it may translate at some point into higher beef prices. I'm so not sure about that. But just remember to lock up your cattle before you go to bed. <laughs> do you always do that? I always do. Thanks, Deb Peterson. Call your wife. All right. See you later. St. Louis Post-Dispatch Editorial Board. My are we behind? Mike Kelly coming up in a second. Business to attend.